Hi, so today we're going to talk about the hemoglobin function and the hemoglobin dissociation curve. Okay, so what's the hemoglobin function anyway? The main function of hemoglobin is to deliver and release oxygen to tissues and to get rid of carbon dioxide. But we're going to focus more on oxygen. So, 2,3-DPG controls hemoglobin affinity for oxygen loading and unloading. So how it does this is, so for unloading of oxygen, 2,3-DPG binds to your beta chains. And as we could remember from my previous video, there are two pairs of chains in a hemoglobin molecule. There's the beta chains and the alpha chains. Now, 2,3-DPG binds to your beta chains and it turns the hemoglobin into its dense form. And the end result is the hemoglobin will have low affinity to oxygen. As for loading of oxygen, let's start at the lungs. So there's a lot of oxygen in the lungs and that causes the beta chains to pull together and kick out the 2,3-DPG. And then it turns into the relaxed form. And then the end result will be the hemoglobin molecule will have high affinity to oxygen. So these are just for sake of imagery. That's not how your heme looks like. So for tense form, I chose this because it looks like it's, you know, it's tense. There's no space. And um, for this one, it's more spacious. It's more relaxed. That's why I chose these images. But that's not what hemoglobin looks like. Just to clarify. And so this is how I would think this whole process is like. So when 2,3-DPG binds to your beta chains, um, it gives away the oxygen. So your heart here is the oxygen is giving it away. The heme is giving it away. As for loading of oxygen, um, the beta chains pull together so it's more relaxed, more spacious, and your oxygen stays with you. So your hemoglobin is happy and it's keeping its oxygen there. And so that whole loading and unloading of oxygen is called the respiratory movement. And then we're going to talk about that more. So in your lungs, the PO2 or the oxygen tension, uh, which just represents how, mu how much oxygen there is on certain areas, it's measured at 100 millimeters mercury in your lungs. And in your lungs... Hemoglobin saturation, so how much um, oxygen is in your hemoglobins, it's at 100%, and that makes sense, so 100, 100. In your tissues, however, it's a different picture. So in your tissues, the oxygen tension is only at 40 millimeters mercury, and hemoglobin oxygen saturation is at 75%. So... The hemoglobin drops from your lungs from 100% to 75%. There's only a deficit of 25% as it goes through your tissues. So as you can see, the relationship is not directly proportional. It's more of a sigmoid curve as we go through the dissociation curve later. So it's not like because it's 100 here, it's 100 here, and then here it's 40, it should be 40 here. No, that's not the case. And... Um, we're going to talk about that next. Okay, so the next part is the hemoglobin oxygen dissociation curve. So let's talk about the parts of the curve. First of all, the y-axis. So as you can see, it's the oxygen saturation. So the higher the number, the more saturated your hemoglobins are with oxygen. And then the x-axis is the oxygen tension. So the higher the number, the more oxygen there is in that specific environment. Like as you can see in the lungs, it's at 100. And just for the sake of remembering things, I placed the images of the lungs and the tissue so that it's easier to understand the curve as well. So P50, this is the oxygen tension when hemoglobin is 50% saturated. Normal P50 is at 26 to 30 millimeters mercury. So this is where the oxygen tension is when your hemoglobins are 50% saturated with oxygen. So it's around this number. So again, oxygen tension in tissues are at 40. So I placed the image here. And 
as you can see, these three dots represent the important parts of the curve. So at this point, um, we're talking about the release of oxygen. So from the very top, oxygen saturation is 100%. That's in your lungs. That makes sense, right? So that's what that dot is. It's at the 100. Um, and then when your hemoglobin molecules travel to the tissues, it drops off 25% of the oxygen. So in the tissues, there's only 75% oxygen saturation, and you have lost 25% from when you came from your lungs. And that's that, that's that dot. And then lastly, the P50 right there. So this is the oxygen tension when saturation is at 50%. And that's it. That's the hemoglobin oxygen dissociation curve. So now let's talk about left and right shifting. Okay, so we're going to talk about right shifting first. So right shifting, as you can see, the oxygen saturation actually stays the same. Uh, but the oxygen tension increases um, if you look at the dots. So at 50%, oxygen tension actually increased to like around higher than 30 um, originally. But we're going to talk about the causes of why it's shifting. So there's anemia, hypoxia, increased temperature, low pH or acidosis in the tissues. And basically, this happens when you want to give oxygen to your tissues right away. So it's like you want to get rid of oxygen right away. So this goes back to the previous slide that talks about 2,3-DPG. And that's um, with the presence of 2,3-DPG, beta chains shifts the heme molecule into the tense form and releases oxygen. So your body starts to produce a lot of this, 2,3-DPG, and that's how it's able to release oxygen readily to the tissues, um, even with a higher oxygen tension. So like here, before, um, on your tissues at 40 millimeters mercury, uh, that's when oxygen gets released, right? But now, even at a higher, maybe this is like at 45 or 50, it's able to do that. And that's because it increases the 2,3-DPG on your hemoglobin molecules. So it does that like in anemic cases where patients don't have enough red blood cells, but they still want to be able to oxygenate their body the body adjusts, okay? The body adjusts to be able to still give oxygen to the tissues despite the lesser amount of hemoglobin in the body. How it does that is that it increases the production of 2,3-DPG. And that's how we're able to release oxygen easier. And that's that for anemic. And the same goes for hypoxia, for increased temperature, Low pH, because in acidic conditions, if your tissues become like acidic, if you're working out and you know, there's lactic acid, there's acidosis, you are able to balance the pH by releasing oxygen more readily to the tissues. Basically, you know, when it right shifts, it's giving away oxygen easier. And so the effect of this is P50 increases. Remember, P50 is the oxygen tension when hemoglobin is 50% saturated. So here, P50 was only at around 26 to 30. And on our right shift, it is now at like, I don't know, 35, 36. The point is it increased. So it's actually an effect of right shifting. So we're going to talk about left shifting now. So what does that mean? That means you're not giving away your oxygen readily because it's complete opposite from the one earlier. So what's the causes of left shifting? There's increase in pH, decrease in temperature, increase in abnormal hemoglobins, and decrease in 2,3-DPG. So... What does 2,3-DPG do? It makes your hemoglobins easier to unload oxygen, right? So if there's a decrease in 2,3-DPG, that means it's now holding on to your oxygen more. It's not giving it away to your tissues. Um, and there's a reason for that. 
So for this, um, this is uh, an important blood bank concept. So if you have a unit of red blood cells that's been stored for a while, eventually the 2,3-DPG gets depleted in that blood. So what happens is even if you're getting transfused, it might still not be as efficient um, in oxygen delivery because there's probably not enough 2,3-DPG in that unit of blood anymore. And that's why it shifts to the left, okay? And, you know, that's that. And then increasing abnormal hemoglobin. So I'm going to cover that more on the next slide. Um, basically, these two are just the opposite of the one earlier. So earlier, if there is a decrease in pH, if, if it's too acidic, you're able to release your oxygen readily. So now if it's too alkaline, you don't want to give it more, um, you know, oxygen. You want to keep the oxygen on your hemoglobin. You want to decrease the alkalosis. And that's pretty much it. So the effect of left shifting is your P50 value decreases. So before, P50 was around 26 to 30 normally on baseline. But after the adjustment of left shifting, it decreases. It decreases down to probably 25, 24. Point is, the effect of left shifting is that P50 decreases too. So next slide, we're going to talk about abnormal hemoglobins and why your curve shifts to the left. So let's talk about carboxyhemoglobin first. So carboxyhemoglobin is when carbon monoxide attaches to your hemoglobin molecule instead of an oxygen molecule, okay? So it kind of looks like that, so a CO into your heme. Now, that's a problem because when carbon monoxide attaches to your hemoglobin, it attaches too strong. Like, it's super glued to it. So it's not able to let it go once that thing is on there. And so, what happens is you're not able to oxygenate your body because carbon monoxide is poisoning you. That's why we have carbon monoxide alarms and all that because pretty much you're just... Drowning, you don't have oxygen anymore because carbon monoxide is attaching to your hemoglobin. So that's carboxyhemoglobin. Next is methemoglobin. This is when your ferric iron is present on the heme group instead of the ferrous iron, which is also a problem because ferric iron creates a strong bond with the heme group. And then sulfhemoglobin is when there's too much sulfur in your blood, body, you're ingesting sulfur-containing drugs, or chronic constipation. That increases sulfur in your body as well. So this is a problem as well because sulfhemoglobin actually deforms the hemoglobin molecule. Deforms, okay? So it's an irreversible, uh, what do you call this? Irreversible event. It's not able to carry oxygen anymore after that until the RBC is removed from the circulation. So all three of these um, abnormal hemoglobins pretty much makes it hard for your body to pick up oxygen again because they are attaching to the heme group too much, okay? The, the bond is too strong or in this case on the self-hemoglobin, it would never let it go. So that's why your, what do you call this? Your... P50 actually shifts to the left. Your curve shifts to the left because of abnormal hemoglobins because your body is not letting go anymore. Once it's attaching to these abnormal hemoglobins, it's not letting go. So your P50 decreases. Your, your oxygen unloading is not effective anymore because you're getting occupied with abnormal hemoglobins. So your Curve left shifts, okay? Remember, when the curve shifts left, it's not letting go. When it's shifting to the right, it wants things, it's easy to let go. Oxygen is getting released. And so, that ends it. That ends my presentation today. So hopefully, you know, you're able to understand this whole picture better with this lecture because this actually really confused me when I was a student 
and that's why I wanted to cover it on my YouTube channel. So let me know if you guys want to talk about other things um, heme related or clinical lab science related that I can somehow make easier for you to understand. But hopefully this helps a lot because this one actually covers blood bank, blood gas, and hematology all in one lecture. So that's it. Thank you for watching today and I hope you learned something. <laughs> Bye.